we were doing our first vlog, we did a little mock rig rundown. We're having a bit of fun, and it got me thinking. Maybe someone out there wants to know what we're using. I mean, the gear's not spectacular, but it's something I've wanted to do for a while personally, and I think we're going to do it for all of us. I think Hayden's going to do it for his base when he's getting a rig. It's really exciting. Um, so I think we're, we're doing that. So I thought I'd start things off as I've got my rig kind of nailed down. I'm always changing stuff, but yeah. So <laughs> you uh, you'll probably see throughout the video me playing and all the different sounds I use and stuff. Primarily, it's just cheap. Everything I use is cheap and it's good. I um I proudly use Behringer. I go against the grain. A lot of people blasted them when I was looking up reviews and stuff, but I think they're brilliant. So I got for my birthday this beautiful thing here the PB1000 it's a very cool board all powered it's got everything you need you just need the pedals so I got that and I got a tuning pedal and a distortion pedal so I went out and I got the rest 20 quid not sponsored by the way I'm just I just I just want to praise Behringer 20 quid per pedal and I've, I've nailed down the sound of the dead red lips so let me take you through the board. Firstly, actually we'll do it this way. So I've got the tuner, chromatic tuner, TU300. Brilliant, works nicely, there you go, look, there's it on, there's it off. And then I've got one of my favorite pedals, the Super Fuzz, the SF300. This thing is gnarly and it really captures that Jack White sound, which I personally love. Next to that, we've got the Vintage Tube Overdrive, which is my, I kind of use it as a boost, because um, I'm playing quite a dirty sound for the amp anyway. I um, I tend to use this just to give me a bit more growl and a bit more, a bit more of a boost, like I said. Next to that, the UT300 Ultra Tremolo. I use this only on a couple songs. It's kind of just here to be used when it needs to be. It's not in the set constantly, but it's very cool and I really do like it. It works for these psychedelic -y bits we do. Next to that, this pedal is always on. This is the DR600, the digital reverb pedal. Let me just get a better view. This thing is on constantly. I have it on spring mode. There's my settings. Everything's sort of dialed for about nine, 10 o'clock. Um, yeah, I keep it on all the time, that's my main reverb. I mean, I could have reverb on the amp and stuff, but I think this, this does its job. Next to that, this is almost on all the time. I mean, it gets played with a lot. You'll hear it on our single Digital Ghosts. Um, this pedal kind of is our sound. This is the VD400 Vintage Delay. This thing is insane. I play with these, these two quite a fair bit because you turn them up and down, you get really cool washy effects and I keep the echo quite low because obviously I've got reverb. But that's usually on, and that thickens my sound. There's three of us in this band. And uh, we didn't want anybody else. We want the three of us to make as much noise as possible. So that was my mission. We got these pedals, and there we are. The delay like thickens everything. I will run through everything properly throughout this video. You'll probably already see it. Oh well, editing. Uh, anyway. Next on, Vintage Phaser. I got this off a friend, a very, very dear friend. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Uh, Vintage Phaser Face Shifter Model VP1. It's a beastie pedal. It's massive. Look at that. It's not actually in the board yet. It's fine. Um, yeah, I use this on one song in particular and quite a few like Hendrixy style solos. Spare plug. There's the power. Look at that. Beautiful. And then next to my board, I haven't hooked it up today, but I do when I play live. This is my Valve State Technology channel select for my Marshall. Yeah. Um, I don't use that one. I use Clean on a couple couple songs just, just because it's clean. It's probably the cleanest I'll ever be. I mainly use OD1, and OD2 is, again, another little boost. Um, what you heard me playing through at the beginning of this video, oh, if I just come round, what you heard me playing from the beginning of this video was K 
clean, which I'm on now, and overdrive one. And yeah, it's a digital amp, Marshall, AVT150H, lovely, valve state. Look at that, look at that, there it is. Go back down. Uh, you got all the bells and whistles. Um, it, it was, yeah, I just wanted a Marshall. I didn't know if I wanted the standard Marshalls. Uh, so I got this, I mean, it's digital. Um, some people are against digital. I'm really not fussed. It's got loads of effects and all that. Don't really use them. All the overdrive tones I've sort of played with a little bit. There's my settings, probably not the best. I'm not the most talented guitarist in the world. There's my cab. This was a crate. Not sure what's in it. Uh, so there, there's that. Not sure what's in it. Um, it was a crate amp because this here was the first ever head I had. It's broken. <laughs> It um, only has a clean channel and a rhythm channel, which sounds awful, and the solo channel doesn't work. But I use this for many gigs, but not for the dead or a bit. So this is sort of like a backup i I'm keeping it because it's nostalgia. So that's the amp, the uh, Marshall OBT. That's what I use every gig. You'll hear this on possibly on the recordings. Uh, I may very well use my Line 6 Spider. I use that as a practice. I haven't got it in here, so I can't show you, but I will get some footage of it. Um, I use that for practices, as you might have seen in the vlogs, because we play in a very tiny room and we don't want to make loads of noise. On to the really cool stuff. Now, my main guitar, there's a dinosaur on it. My main guitar for the Dead Red Lips. I, I'm trying to use just one guitar. I have 15. I could pick any number of them and I probably will, but for now, for the purpose of this video, the main guitar I own is this Encore Strat. It's beautiful. Now, I did mention in the vlog, people like to blast Encores. Don't. Yes, sounds hollow, it's probably very cheaply made and won't last on tour. But that's the idea, we're a psychedelic punk band, I mean these guitars are, this has been beaten with an inch of its life, it's just been restrung because I broke a string um, and I've got a gig, this will probably go out after the gig, so I've had a gig so I've possibly broken another string. But this thing, this thing screams and squeals like anything, stays in tune perfectly, I really like the feel of it, I'm, it's so comfortable, it's really dirty and I need to clean it. But what may as a strawberry? What makes this good, I would say, primarily, is that we've modded it. So this, this shouldn't be here. What is this? Oh, so these are the stock pickups. I picked up this guitar for 20 pounds, 20 English pounds, um, on a Facebook sale site. Uh, I liked it because it, like, it looked white in the picture. It's actually off-white. So there's the white and there's the off-white, but it, it adds to it. It's lovely, I really like it. And it's glittery if you look at it in person, but. And I had immediately had an idea. It had a standard pickup. Actually think I have the pickup somewhere. Follow me, YouTube. Every guitarist has one of these pots. Yep, junk pot. There. There's a bridge. There it is. There's the pickup. That was in it, probably. I have a few of these. Just a cheap humbucker. Look at this stuff. Look, there's another bridge in there. There's another pickup. I like to keep things. You never know when you need anything, and that is the moral for this story, because I had Seymour Duncan. It was in a Les Paul I had, an ESP LTD Les Paul, can't remember the make, got it upstairs somewhere. Um, but it was a Seymour Duncan, humbucker. I'm not really a metal guy, I mean I, I primarily thought of them as metal pickups. They're quite loud and heavy, but anyway. I said to my dad, who helps me make these guitars, because I've modded every single guitar I own, let's put it in there, let's see what it sounds like. So uh, we tore it out, put the Seymour Duncan in. I couldn't tell you what Seymour Duncan it is, but whatever it is, I will find out one day, because I want more. It is the key to the sound that I have in the Dead Red Lips, and it's amazing. I, I, I am speechless about this pickup, it is brilliant. 
So that's in my very cheap encore. And that screams and squeals. You'll hear it on the live videos. You'll hear it in practice sessions. I, I'm just going to use this guitar. I have backup guitars. I have a Squire Strat tobacco verse. All single pickups stock. Um, I have that as a backup. I've got an Epiphone by Gibson Explorer from the 80s. That's been heavily modded. I'll probably use that at some point. But for the time being, Flynn... This beautiful thing here, who I've named Flynn after a flintlock pistol because she packs a punch. This thing, this thing is beautiful and is perfect. I should probably wrap it up here because we want these videos to be a bit shorter. If this is the sort of thing you like and you want to know more, let us know because we can do way more with this. I have so much gear I could probably go through. Hayden has a load of gear. We will definitely be doing a bass one whether you like it or not. We'll probably even do a drum one, if that's what you like. We'll do anything on this page. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up for now. You'll see some playing footage and stuff on this video. I really hope you like it. It's weird for me to do this. Still on the iPhone, so it might sound a bit bad. Apologies, I hope it's fine. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for this video. Go watch the vlogs, go watch all the gig footage. Thanks for watching. Bye.